All right, so for the first installment for our Fascia Friday, uh, I wanted to talk about plasticity, or as it's written here, P equals V plus E. So that reads plasticity equals viscosity plus elasticity. And for some of you, as you know, plasticity is one of the main properties, viscosity and elasticity and remodeling being the others, uh, of fascial tissue. Plasticity can just be most simplified by saying that it's the ability of the tissue to reshape and reform uh, once external load has been applied. So while some athletes, uh, depending on their sport or even you know within the sport, uh, depending on their position and how specialized they, they are or need to be, we're going to see different demands for independently viscosity and for elasticity, or in other words, for you know athletes to be able to bend and move and kind of glide around. You think more like martial arts and um, you know even like water-based sports, uh, but in other cases, we're going to see athletes that demand more of the elastic properties. But in either case, almost all athletes of any sport are going to need to be able to tolerate external force without incurring injury and then being able to have their tissue return back to form. So while we're talking about plasticity, and although this is Fascia Friday, do bear in mind that these properties do also apply pretty much equally to tendons and then in even some cases ligaments as well to a slightly lesser degree. So if we take and combine the two variables, we get viscoelasticity, and this is essentially suggesting that there is a time-based response to force application for fascia. So if we apply something in a slow, controlled manner, uh, there's a certain response, and then if we move in more of a ballistic or an elastic fashion, then there is a different response to the fascial tissue as well. We already mentioned that you know elasticity refers to the ability to stretch, and, and viscosity refers to the ability to glide, but Another thing that we need to be aware of is what's known as hysteresis, and hysteresis is this gray area here in the middle that again refers to soft tissue structures to include fascia that represents the amount of energy lost. So the blue curve coming up here, force and extension on the y and x axis, axes respectively, on the loading phase we see a certain shape for the slope, while on the unloading we notice that there is a little bit of a difference. This hysteresis gap, or loop as it's known as, is where we are dissipating or losing energy. So obviously the goal is to essentially be able to close the gap on these two. And plasticity plays a significant role in that. Given these varying rates of force, <clears throat> it's important for us to be able to observe the, each end of the spectrum. And it, it is reasonable to assume that a dispro disproportionate balance between viscous and elastic properties may impair the physiological functioning. So for, from my lens or from my end, what I'm trying to do is basically see where athletes are limited between these two more. Do they seem to have a problem with being able to bend and, and glide and, and get into different positions uh, you know, reasonably effortlessly and then be able to apply load as well? Or do they have more of a problem of lacking mechanical stiffness, not being you know, very powerful or explosive or twitchy as we like to say now? Um, and between these two, I want to isolate those and try to emphasize that in programming. So somebody who has poor elasticity, we want to emphasize more on the dynamic stretching, the ballistic actions, uh, what I call you know reactive plyometrics or rebound type of plyometrics, and even submax sprinting for you know populations that it applies for. But ultimately, what we're looking for here with elastic properties is somewhere around one second, 0 0.8 to 1.2 being the technical number. Um, of contact or loading and unloading. As for the viscous properties, this we're thinking more about dynamic movement, low level, more rhythmic based plyometrics, uh, movement flow as I like to call it, but again this is just kind of ambiguous and, and organic type of movement patterns, floor work applies equally here, and then select soft tissue modalities that, that will be uh, beneficial for the viscous properties. Generally speaking with viscosity, we're looking at about 60 seconds and up. So just because we're doing something for long durations doesn't mean it needs to be static. It just may need to be continuous. Ultimately, I want to try to establish the viscous and elastic properties independently prior to trying to, uh, in a sense, isolate or focus on the plastic properties. Now, I know for some of you this may just sound like a bunch of jargon, but effectively what, this, what I mean by this is in order to really get the most out of strength training or all of our items over here that most strength and conditioning coaches are adept with and, and in favor of, 
I want to see if they are, again, more bound up or if they lack the ability to apply mechanical stiffness. And in doing so, I'm going to be able to give them the parameters and adjust the training as needed to be able to optimize the portions that are more conventional, such as strength training or sprinting. In essence, it always ultimately boils down to the demands of sport. But with that being understood, we then want to be able to identify how the athlete is deficient within these four proper, I'm sorry, three properties. Um, and where we can put our time best spent. 